catch you with number three in our series of 80s movies that suck. And they're overrated and you shouldn't like them anymore, okay? And I'm going to try to prove that to you in just little incremental ways. The next one we have is E.T. Oh, no. Not that cute turd that looks like a boiled ham on a stick. No, no, no. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. E.T., the extraterrestrial and idiot and all that crap and a heart song. Neil, Neil, they suck Neil Diamond into writing a dang song. You know, he wrote that. Heart, turn on your hard light and let it shine wherever you go. Let it make a happy glow for all the world to see all the... <laughs> that was Ian Anderson from another video, but anyway. So, and then Neil Diamond didn't get picked up for that song. So he's like, you know, Neil's sitting in his mansion. He's like, I've done some brilliant stuff, but uh, I just wrote a, mo a song about E.T. and it didn't get picked up. And now I have this song about an alien that is not attached to the movie. It's just kind of weird if you think about it. Um, ah, but anyway, uh, Spielberg apparently wrote this screenplay because he got, his parents got divorced and he had an imaginary friend. Let me tell you something, Steve. Uh, when these things happen, and that's fine if you need an invisible friend to get through your little divorce situation or whatnot, but keep that stuff buried down, down deep, okay? And suppress the piss out of it, because we don't want to hear that crap. We don't want to hear that you had some weird, like, alien that, like, hung out with you that had a boiled ham stuck on a stick that looked like a turd. Like, it, that's a weird, and it's and his neck like erected out of his body and that's a little too weirdly phallic and it's just I, I just don't we don't need that steve we don't need that stuff in our head okay so just let it be okay let it be let it be let it be but yeah so the story of this movie is some alien botanists are secretly coming down to earth and stealing chrysanthemums and uh you know ferns and all these other you know things that are uh, indigenous to our you know um terrestrial planet and uh what i find interesting about that is it, they're not secretly doing anything they're landing in the woods like a hundred yards from a town and they're dang their spaceships lit up like a peterbilt 389 just left the love's truck stop and the guy just maxed out his credit card on yellow marker lights it's just stupid it's you know it's flashlights going everywhere um and so then elliot gets involved and Reese Pieces throws a baseball, hides him, they go to Halloween. And all it's just, it's just, a, and then like everything starts dying, right? Like he raises this plant and stops it from wilting and brings it back to life. And then later on, him and, him and Elliot are somehow like having sex or something. They've somehow like become one. And so now E.T.'s dying, I guess, because it's like your Wi-Fi signal getting too far away from the house. You lose yourself. His, the spaceship is too far away from E.T. or he's too far away from his planet. So now they're both dying at the same time. And then all of a sudden, like, Elliot's fine and E.T.'s like white. And now he looks like a white ham on a stick. You know, it's just weird. And I'm going to tell you something right now. If I figure out that I go in there and Elliot's my son and I'm in this government you know, bubble they've created for him to live in. And I'm like, so what's going on, Doc? Uh, it appears that uh, he and the uh, he and the extraterrestrial are somehow synced up and have a symbiotic relationship, and uh, the, the, the alien seems to be killing him. This is me. I shoot E.T. In the, in, in the bold ham, in the neck, and in the turd body, right? And he dies, okay? And then Elliot's like, man, I feel better, right? That's because I killed E.T. and he was dragging you down. Stop playing with stuff in a cornfield. And why did this neighborhood have a cornfield right behind it? It's kind of weird, you know? Um, but nevertheless, everything's dying, okay? And why can the dude only fly on Earth? Why can't he just fly off and go back to his ship? Because they're pedaling their little bikes. And somehow his telekinesis allows him to rock it over the, the moon, you know, and all that crap. That seems kind of dumb that he couldn't somehow parlay that into getting back home. And and why did those dudes leave him, right? Like, uh, yeah, dang. I mean, I, I got I got a problem with you people, right? Like, y'all left me on another planet. It's not like, hey, man, like Home Alone, we flew to Europe and left Kevin back at the house in Chicago, wherever the heck they was. Or like, oh, dude. Matt, did we leave you at the bar? That man, I'm sorry, we'll be back over there. We're ten minutes away. You know, they left me on another planet. Like that, that's another planet. Like that's a big deal. So when I get back, 
there's gonna be some bitch slapping going on on the ship. I'm mean, like, who who was driving? Which which one of you ham stick turd face looking people was driving this ship that left me in the woods uh, with, with with these humans that made me die? I ended up in a culvert looking like you know a, a white piece of crap and you know, like laying in a river. It's just it's ridiculous. But and then I made the mistake. I made the mistake of I, you remember because you remember ET wasn't on like any kind of video for like ever like you if you didn't watch it in 1982 you didn't watch ET okay because there wasn't no YouTube there wasn't they didn't put it out on home video for some reason probably because uh, Stephen needed to keep it close to his heart because it was his you know divorce safety blanket uh, but at any rate he uh, he goes through there and you couldn't see it well then I go back in like the early 2000s. And just for giggles, I'm like, oh, I'll watch this. They've remade it. What, how bad could it be? Man, it was about as dumb as watching when, when they redid Star Wars and added all that, like, special effect hologram crap in there that just made the movie look dumb. Because it just, it stands out. It doesn't look right. And all I remember is that this movie is so much dumber than I thought. So, we are now down to the last two. Okay? Uh, number two. The Karate Kid. Uh, 1984. Um, I'm sure most of you, if you're watching this, have probably seen the montage that is brilliant, by the way. And it basically talks, it, it shows how in every instance, Ralph Macchio's character, uh, Daniel San, is the bully to the Cobra Kai people in every situation. Like, he starts everything that they do. Like, he starts the fight on the beach. He starts the fight at the Halloween party with the water over the stall. Like, everything they do... He's 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 pushing the envelope, right? And 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 all that. And it's it's actually really brilliantly done. And because of that, there's a lot of plot holes that that come along with this. And I don't even want to get into that Cobra Kai because I started watching that crap and that was dumb. Okay, Daniel's running like an Audi dealership, and uh, uh, Johnny's riding around in like an '82 Berlinetta that well, you know what is it was barely new when the movie came out, you know. And he's down on his luck, you know, drinking Foster's for beer, you know, whatever. But it just, it doesn't strike me as a good movie, okay? And here's the thing about fighting, okay? You can take all the martial arts you want. You can go, you can go, uh, you know, you can go take karate and taekwondo and all this crap with, you know, the guy that runs your apartment complex maintenance facility. Uh, you could do that. He could have done that crap for four years. If you never spar with anybody, you never get good at fighting because you've never been hit. And it's about getting hit just like it is getting, uh, hitting. You know, you, you've got, you can't just sit there and just wax on the fence and wax off the fence and wax on the damn, the damn. Next thing you know, I'm a blue belt. You know, it doesn't work that way. Otherwise, every dude that works in a body shop would be like, you know, a red belt in every martial art, you know, thing there is on earth. That's just dumb, okay? So let's put that to a side, okay? He doesn't train for a, t a tournament by going and sanding a fence and waxing a car and buffing a floor and all this other crap he's got him doing, you know. Uh, I mean, th that's just not what fighting is made of. Plus, if you've ever been to a karate tournament, it's like going to your first high school wrestling match and you know nothing about it. You're like, okay, so this point system makes no sense. What are we doing? What? Why did that? Why? What? Who? They reverse? What? What is the point? You know, it, it makes no sense. And so he's he's pushed off into this tournament and he's like, all right, cool. So. I just hit this guy in the face. No, you can't hit him in the face. And normally you're wearing headgear and all these protective stupid pads. It's not usually like, you know, bare knuckle karate at an 18 and under tournament. But nevertheless, all that stuff is, you know, it's 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 under the bridge. It's water near the bridge. The bigger things are the fact that it's just a, a silly story, right? Like she goes from Reseda to California to work for some, you know, uh, big tech company that goes under, you know, you find out later through a deleted scene. It's not even addressed because she's working like a, as a waitress or whatever. Like, would you imagine going from like Newark to Reseda? Like, is that, could there be a bigger difference in America? Like, you know, that, that's, that's kind of, that's Butte, Montana to Miami. You know, that's just a crazy, uh, transvergence, if that's a word, I think it is. Um, you know, of, of lifestyles and whatnot. That, that's just weird. And then Ralph Macchio is like 27 years old. You know, and he's playing like a 17-year-old. Can we not find a kid that actually has some athletic ability that maybe even has some kind of green, blue belt, you know, already that has the moves down? Because he looks so stilted. And I'm going to tell you what, anybody comes to me with that crane technique, I'm just going to stand and I'm going to drop my guard. And I'm going to let you do this crane technique and then I'm going to break your knee, okay? And speaking of broken knees, there is no like 
pressure sensitive, like, you know, uh, compression healing that the Orient knows about that can heal an MCL or an ACL tear that somebody just blew out your knee. You ain't going back on that, okay? That's just not happening, okay? And I think it's stupid that they insult our intelligence by telling us that there are, okay? It's just, it is what it is. And, and so you've got Johnny fighting a black belt and how we knew they were going to meet in the end because all they said was, hey, 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 why don't we let the kid go to the tournament and they can they can sort all their problems out in the tournament. What if all the Cobra Kai had lost in the first round and he doesn't get to fight any of them? Like you can't, it, it's, you know, it's, it, it's not how tournaments work. It's just kind of weird. Um, but, you know, tournament format be damned and, and whatnot. I, it, it's, it's a movie, uh, you know. And to me, the only redeeming thing about that movie, I think it's the Karate Kid, but I'm putting Karate Kid, is that, uh, the young Elizabeth Shue is pretty hot. And the second thing is that she's pretty hot. That's about, that's about it. So, so now we have gotten to the final one. All right, I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna post it. One starts with a D. <laughs> and it's Die Hard, okay? First of all, this is not a Christmas movie, okay? Uh, it came out July 15th of 1988, okay? That's not a Christmas movie. Christmas movies come out at Christmas, okay? Because they take advantage of the Christmas season. This movie just happened to be at Christmas. I mean, trading places, okay? That was at Christmas. Is that a Christmas movie? No, it's not. It's That's that's a, that's a dumb logic. It's just a movie that happens to be... That's like saying, well, this is a winter movie. No, it's just a movie that was shot in the winter. It, just does, it doesn't have anything to do with the story, okay? Nothing, okay? They could have just as easily... Uh, you know, they needed a reason to get together. Oh, they got him in a Christmas party at the Nakatomi Plaza. They could have just said, hey, uh, Mr. Nakatomi's retiring, or Takiyako, whatever his name was in the movie, he's retiring. Um, or, you know, Shirley from accounting is retiring, and we're going to throw her a big shindig. Everybody bring their spouse, and we'll we'll have little little Smokies and, and wine spritzers. You know, whatever, dude. You know, it's all good. Okay, so there's that. Uh, I, I don't I don't buy that it's a Christmas movie, so that, that's, that's dumb, okay? Um, and the other thing is, is why did why did he get a limo at the? At, I mean, what what were New York cops making in 1988 that he got a limo in L.A. I think it was L.A. Uh, and and then pays the dude whose name is Argyle, by the way, what kind of name that is, um, to wait underneath the place. Hey, just hang out for a while. I'll be back in a couple of hours. I'm gonna go upstairs and 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 get a you know like was a cab not of it. Why why did you need and then and and so. Uh, you know, the dude had to be making like seventeen and a half thousand dollars back then. You know, and he's hiring a, a Los Angeles limo to take him from the airport to the Nakatomi Plaza, whatever. So then he gets upstairs and he's got to get he's got to get changed, right? Like, dude, you just took a, like a five and a half hour flight from New York, like LaGuardia to LAX is like five and a half hours. Like, yeah, do you get dressed at seven in the morning and need to change clothes at noon? Like, that makes no sense. With oh, let me get into my party clothes and change and. Wear your party clothes, okay? You don't need to be bringing a change of clothes, and all. that's just that's that's odd to me. That he's got to wash up, okay? And here's the problem I have with the takeover of the plaza, okay? There had to be 400 cleaning people in that building, uh, if nothing else, okay? Because that's what those buildings do after hours, okay? Now I looked it up. The Nakatomi Plaza, as it were, is like the Fox Center Plaza or some something like that, right? It was only built like a year or so before this movie. So it was a brand new building uh, that they used for this movie, which was, that was cool, whatever. But it is 34 stories tall, okay? Now bear with me here. Dude, let's, let's extrapolate a little bit of math, okay? It's 969,990 square feet, okay? Now, by my count, there were 13 bad guys, okay? Carl and his brother Tony and, you know, whatever the other one, Hans and all the ones you don't know. Okay, so 13 bad guys. That means that each bad guy, when they enter the building to take over this property, has to cover 74,614 square feet, okay? Do you realize how big that is? I mean, that, that's that's Biltmore Estate Plus, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's almost each person covering 25, 3,000 square foot homes. So if we break that down one more step, a thousand square foot home, just your typical little two, three bad room, one or two bad bath, you know, whatever, just nothing house, right? You'd have to do 969 of those uh, a piece. Like, that's insane. Uh, 
That's insane. All right. And if you were able to push that house in five minutes, and you think about, it, you got to check under every door or every cabinet, under, behind every closet, you know, under every bed, all that stuff. Like all those offices have got closets and desks, and it would take you hours to clear this place. And what do they do? They go straight up, and 13 people take over the whole building. And most of those people aren't like patrolling. Like they're out, like breaking into the vault. You got the dude downstairs in the van. It's just kind of dumb. That's not, you would have needed like a thousand terrorists to go in and properly take over that facility so that no one, uh, there's no problems, right? And then you don't have John McClain, you know, wilding out around the building, blowing up stuff with, and then let's talk about C4, okay? So he gets their C4 and all this. First of all, the dude's got 11 years as a cop and somehow he's experienced to know, enough to know what, uh, you know, what to do with, with C4. C4 is nothing. It's just, it's just nothing until you put those, um, you know, charges in them. And I don't know if later on in the series and the other seven movies they made about this is, you know, maybe he had some military experience, but I just found it odd that, that he would know what to do with that. And then, of course, he throws it down the the chute or whatever he does, uh, strapped to a computer or something like that, and it, like, blows up the whole... It, C4 doesn't do that. That's not the explosive property of that. It's not what people think it is. I, I just have a problem suspending my disbelief with stuff that I know is not accurate like that. Then you got old fat Carl Winslow. <laughs> Carl Winslow is Sergeant somebody... Al, I think it's Al Powell... How does that sound? God, that sounds dumb. Al Pal? Did they really, I know it's Pal. Maybe it's, we'll, we'll call him Al Pal. Al Pal. Sergeant Al Pal. He's, uh, he's got three Chevron stripes. He's been there at least nine years at LAPD. He's a sergeant. And uh, I don't like the fact that when we first see him, first of all, he's buying what I counted to be 16 packs of double Twinkies for his pregnant wife. That's like over 5,000 calories. Those things are 280 like calories a Twinkie. Like that's insane, okay? Is he trying to give the bitch gestational diabetes? Like is that, were we trying to, you know, facilitate that more? Like, nobody eats that much crap. Now I'm hoping that's just a stock for, you know, she's, uh, uh, you know, six weeks in, this is just what she needs to kind of keep her, 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 you know, her, herself going and whatnot. But nevertheless, you got to figure he's in his early 30s and they're having a baby. That's just, that's pushing it. It's pushing it. I mean, you can take some nice, uh, vitamins and supplements, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you've gotten her pregnant in the, in your early thirties, she's conceivably in her early thirties and you're feeding her 5,000 calories a day in Twinkies, um, that baby's going to have some problems because already she's got some issues with her age, getting a little too close to comfort and all that. But nevertheless, uh, there's that. And then Carl, Carl Winslow comes along and he's, he's all upset because he killed a 13 year old kid. And then he says, I'm not, that's why I'm not drawing my gun on anybody anymore. And, and he's, he's like saying this on the radio. So, you know, everybody else at headquarters is like, Hey, y'all aware that he's not going to protect himself or others in, in the event of a, uh, lethal, you know, use of force and whatnot. But I just find that odd that, that he's a cop and he's walking around. Well, well, just leave the gun at home. Like don't even carry it. It's just a lot of weight. You're just, tearing up your hips. And if you're helping eating all those Twinkies, then, you know, you got that going for you. So I, I just, I find that odd. Then they get Paul Gleason to come in and be like the asshole assistant chief of the LAPD. And he's, you know, we already hate him for trading places, which is also, again, not a Christmas movie. We also hate him from Breakfast Club because he's the guy that stays with him that Saturday and all that. So we, we get him in and they just, they pull somebody that we already hate. Like, I don't like that. Like, give me somebody I don't know and let me decide if I hate him. Because as soon as that dude walked in, I'm like, oh, this is that ass hat from the breakfast club that, you know, wanted the door to stay open. You know, I, who did that? Who? Who? Bender? You know, I, I already don't like him. Okay. So what, I, I just, I don't like that kind of play. And you know, that's what they did that for. Like, who can we get that everybody already hates? Couldn't get E.T. Everybody loved that dude. But anyway. And then the the, the last thing is, uh, you know, when he gives Hans the gun, right? From the best I could tell, uh, that's a 92 or 96F uh, Beretta. It's either a 9 or a 40, right? And he drops a mag. So he drops the mag, and you can tell there's no bullets in it, you know, if there are no bullets in it, because there weren't, because he click click and nothing happened. So you see that, like, why didn't Hans say... Well, he just put an empty magazine back in that gun. And then he puts it in there, and instead of the decock mechanism on the back of the gun that would have, you know, 
decock the hammer. He like pulls the hammer back and does the trigger and does it the completely unsafe way. I mean, it's just horrible gun handling and I can't stand that stuff in a movie. It's not that hard, right? Like chick, 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 you know, you're good. And then you got Carl, Carl with a K, not Carl Winslow with a C. You got Carl, the last person that I will point to is it's hard for me to believe that Carl, who was the conductor, the maestro in the money pit, Shelly Long's ex-boyfriend, the European dude. And then he's like a ballerina in real life and he comes in holding like a styre og, like covered in blood, you know, it's, it's just dumb, you know? And then speaking of blood, you got dummy running across the floor, pulling like a pretty big shard of glass out of his foot. And when you see him dragging himself into the bathroom, do you see how much blood he's losing? Like if he was losing that much blood through his foot, it, it doesn't stop. Like he, he's not getting that to stop without like cauterization and like direct pressure and a tourniquet on his ankle or something. Cause that was a lot of blood. I mean, that was his, his like left foot was just leaking. Right. And then next couple scenes later, he's just got dirty feet. Like, no, you don't pull the blood out and then it stops bleeding. It typically bleeds more like glass don't play and neither does homie. So that's the, uh, that's the list we got here for the on save today. Three parts. Can't believe I just did that for about an hour, but we got through it and uh, nothing to it, but to do it, get giddy up.